What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Today I want to continue our conversation with the ATITs and start discussing the math portion of written expressions, equations, and inequalities. In this video, I'd like to go ahead and extend an invitation for you to go ahead and subscribe to me down below. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, where have you been all my ATITs people? Make sure that you hit that big thumbs up to let other people know that are looking for the ATITs reviews that I'm doing a good job and that this information is helpful for you for passing your ATITs like a boss. Let's get started. So starting off with understanding written expressions. An expression is defined as a mathematical symbol or group of symbols that represents a value. Throughout the study guide, we will have seen many different kinds of variables, operations, and numbers. Each of the following are considered expressions. X, 6Y, 6X plus 3. So if you're like me, one of the most difficult things on the math portion of the ATITs is translating and understanding written expressions and written sentence questions. So some of the questions in the ATITs will test your understanding in translating word problems into expressions and equations. You will use variables to represent unknown quantities. For example, two times a number, two X, half the girls, one divided by two G three less than the total number, t minus three. Another example of something that you're gonna see on the ATITs is an equation defined by multiple expressions combined with an equal sign. So examples of this are x is equal to 100, x plus two is equal to 20, or four x, parentheses, two minus four is equal to 20. Some written equations require the applicant to translate word problems into equations to solve. So let's take a look at some examples of written expressions and the variables that are used to represent the unknown quantities. Here are some examples. There are six times as many boys as girls. So we know that B, boys, is equal to six times as many girls, six G. Taylor paid $120 for four shirts and two pairs of pants. So we know that the equation is 4S, because she got four shirts, plus 2P, two pairs of pants, is equal to $120. Those are two examples of transforming a sentence into a written equation. Just like written equations, we can have written inequalities. So an inequality is defined as a multiple expression combined with an inequality sign as opposed to an equal sign, such as less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So some examples of this are x is greater than or equal to 100, x plus 20 is greater than 40, or 4x parentheses 2 minus y is less than 60. Just as we did previously in our written equations, we're gonna look at written inequalities. So let's take a look at one of the examples we did before. Taylor paid less than $120 for four shirts and two pairs of pants. So we know that 4S, four shirts, plus two pairs of pants, 2P, is less than $120. All of this information is great, but how do I apply this on the ATITs? Well, let's go ahead and start looking at some algebra word problems. So in order to correctly solve algebra word problems, we must put all these learned skills together. We must be sure to take our time and write the equations or inequalities correctly. For example, Jennifer and Calvin collect figurines. Together they have a total of 46 figurines. If Jennifer has 12 more figurines than Calvin, how many figurines does Calvin have? Now we have to make our equation. How do we do this? We're going to let J equal the number of figurines that Jennifer has and C equal the number of figurines that Calvin has. Now you can write the equation as C plus j is equal to 46. We know that Calvin and Jennifer have a total of 46 figurines. However, Jennifer has 12 more than Calvin. We write that as c is equal to j plus 12. Jennifer has 12 more than Calvin. So how are we gonna go ahead and add this together and solve this? Well, we start by substituting the c in the first equation with the c equals j plus 12. So we've got c plus j is equal to 46. Well, we're gonna go ahead and put in our c equation is equal to j plus 12. So now we're gonna have j plus 12 plus j is equal to 46. Now we can go ahead and start combining like terms. So we have j plus 12 plus j is equal to 46. Well, we've got two j's, so we can add those together, which leaves us with 2j plus 12 is equal to 46. 
Now that's a little bit easier to figure out. We're going to do what we've been doing in previous videos. We're going to do 2j plus 12 minus 12 is equal to 46 minus 12. What you do on one side of the equal sign, you must also do on the other side of the equal sign. We're trying to get rid of the 12 on the left side, so we're gonna cancel those out, and we're gonna minus 12 on the other side. So we have 2j is equal to 34. So we have 2j is equal to 34. We need to go ahead and isolate j. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna to divide each side of the equal sign by two. 2j divided by 2, the 2's cancel each other out, we have now isolated j. That is equal to 34 over 2. 34 divided by 2 is equal to 17. So j is equal to 17. J is equal to 17, however we know that Jennifer has 12 more figurines than Calvin does. So we add 17 plus 12 is equal to 29. So Jennifer has a total of 29 figurines. However, we're not concerned about what Jennifer has, we're concerned about what Calvin has. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 46 by 29. That leaves Calvin with 17 figurines. Calvin has 17 figurines while Jennifer has 29. If you haven't done so already, I want you to head over to my website at www.nursechung.com. There I've got additional resources for you for your ATITs exam. That includes additional practice questions for you to take on your own. If you're having some difficulty with these topics, I've also included the PowerPoints if you want to print those out and take notes as we're going along, and as well as the PDF of the Word document where, you know, everybody learns a little bit differently. Some people learn better with PowerPoint notes and some people learn better with just the Word document itself. So go ahead and go over there and check that out so that way we can pass this ATITs the first time and kill it like a boss. So I hope that this information was helpful for you to pass your ATIT's math portion of the exam. I'm going to start doing some Facebook Live videos of review questions and different topics on the ATIT's that may help you get a better understanding and get some additional practice in before you step in there and hopefully reduce that anxiety so that you don't have to worry about this. You know you're going to pass this like a boss. So go ahead and go on over there. Make sure that you like that page. That's facebook.com slash Nurse Chung where I'll be posting when I'll be doing those videos. That's hopefully at a convenient time for you. If not, they'll go ahead and be posted down here so that you can kind of play along with me as we did over on Facebook, just kind of on your own, your own practice. But if you're not already following any of my social media, go ahead and check me out. I'm at Nurse Chung on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But until next time, I hope that y'all are having a wonderful day and I look forward to speaking with you all again soon. Bye!